Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Deep Understanding of Research Papers So in this tutorial, I am going to explain a paper uh, called uh, Device Placements Optimization with Reinforcement Learning This paper uh, is by Google Research, uh, sorry, Google Brain and uh, this paper uh, is by uh, Azilia, Hugh, Quackley, uh, Benoit Steiner, Ramso, uh, Ramsos then Yi Fing So, Naveen Kumar, uh, Mohamed Naruzi, then Swami uh, Benjio and uh, Jeftin this is a very well known paper and uh, I really like this paper and uh, the tutorial is going to cover the overview of this paper then uh, we'll see the method they have used uh, for this uh, device placement optimization then uh, we'll see the data set and uh, finally we'll see some experiments and uh, some results so in the overview uh, basically the paper is designed to uh, designed for device placements so you may ask uh, what is device placements uh, let's say i have uh, 10 gpus with me and i have a graph to execute i mean so let's say some tensor flow graph which has some convolution max pooling some sort of some operations and i want to optimally place these uh, operations to these 10 gpus and how do we do that uh, humans can do it i mean if i give you two three layers of lstm you can say i'll put each uh, layer to one gpu so that way humans can design some uh, or humans can put these uh, uh, nodes or put these operations onto particular GPUs or CPU but the question is uh, what is the optimal um, optimal uh, placement or op I mean how do we make use of all the resources we have for executing this uh, graph or training this graph in a very efficient manner so that the running time is small compared to uh, like uh, suboptimal or another other uh, placements de device placements basically and as i said uh, this method is to learn to optimize the device placements uh, for tensorflow graphs basically computational graphs and to achieve this uh, they use a sequence to sequence model we'll see how they leverage this uh, sequence to sequence model and uh, to predict for to predict for a given sequence of uh, or given uh, the computational graphs or uh, computational nodes of the tensorflow graph and uh, how do they predict which operations or which node to put at what uh, at which gpu or which cpu and uh, that is the main goal of this uh, paper and uh, i will show you how they how they have used uh, reinforcement learning technique to minimize the uh, execution time basically so in uh, reinforcement learning people usually uh, maximize the reward and uh, that reward signal here is, uh, is a run time it's not a reward basically it's a some sort of loss you can think of because you want to minimize the run time so that's the idea and as you can see here the graph shows you have an environment and uh, you again uh, basically the setup where you have put some uh, nodes to uh, put, i mean put some computational uh, elements to particular uh, gpus or particular devices and uh, you want to measure the run time at that particular environment uh, state then uh, you can update the placement based on the reward right or runtime runtime is nothing but your uh, reward function and uh, you want to minimize that execution time and uh, you will train this with uh, uh, reinforce technique we'll describe that later so this is the overview of the paper and uh, they show uh, how, how they get speed up in uh, doing or in optimizing the device placements using rl is uh, uh, optimizing the re uh, device placement using RL and they show that this optimization is better than uh, human designed uh, architectures or human designed placements so this is the idea so let's consider you have a tensorflow graph capital G let's assume you have this is the computational graphs and you can think of this as so any sort of graph which can have mat mathematics like multi multi multiply matmul or add or constant uh, whatever like whatever you can think of uh, computational elements in your tensorflow graph and assume there are m operations so o1 o2 uh, o so on uh, till om and this could be thousands of uh, operations i mean we'll come to that later so this would be so many operations you have in your uh, computational graph and you also have a list of devices so available devices basically you may have access to let's say 100 cpus and 1000 gpus i mean it's not reasonable let's say 100 gpus and 1000 cpus right so you may have that and let's call them as p1 p2 pm sorry uh, those those are the d avail d uh, d uh, list of d available uh, devices and d could be 1000 let's say now you want to find out a placement which which we call it as p 
and uh, these placements are nothing but on which device I am going to execute this operations O1 on that is called P1 right this O1 could go on a GPU Tesla K40 GPU and O2 can go on let's say Tesla P100 GPU and O3 can go on uh, let's say Tesla K80 or Tesla M20 any GPU so any available device capital D or it can be also CPU like some Xeon uh, uh, Maxwell or Hexa I mean as well architecture CPU also so any sort of device uh, I will I, I mean they show okay what are the devices available it's obviously it's not all the devices you have uh, in your uh, uh, lab I mean it's just some some available devices you have and uh, you want to place all these uh, operations to particular particular uh, devices and we call them as placements so once you place them on a particular device you can give them give them call them as p1 so that way for all these uh, m operations you have m placements and uh, and this is what I am describing and once you place these uh, place these uh, operations onto a particular uh, I mean basically place this complete graph onto a particular uh, setup of uh, device placements uh, for a given P, P equal to capital M you can compute the uh, the time it takes to execute the graph right let's call that as RP R of capital P and P is nothing but the placement given placement any placement and uh, you want to minimize this execution time and we will see how do we uh, use uh, reinforcement learning to minimize this uh, r of p which is, which is because why because this is a discrete number you get at every place after every placement and uh, you can uh, uh, minimize this reward function i mean uh, so not reward it's you can think of it as a loss uh, to loss and once you minimize this loss or once you minimize this execution time then you will be able to uh, get an optimal uh, placement there are many hurdles i mean to reach there but uh, we'll see now uh, the formulation or the idea of this paper is this uh, let's say we train a policy pi uh, for a given placement uh, for, i mean to pr predict a placement p uh, given the given the computational graph and the parameters of the policy and uh, we train the policy to minimize the cost function which is defined defined like this so j of theta is basically the cost function and you want to find out the expectation of uh, all the possible i mean all the placements given the policy and this r capital r of p is basically similar to small r of p we saw here but the only change is this is smaller that is capital R. you can ask why that is the small r is basically the reward or sorry the execution time and uh, we want to put a square root of it so basically if you read the paper this capital rp is nothing but the square root of uh, small rp and there are reasons why they do that and uh, this capital rp is my reward now not reward loss let's consider that as a loss and for i mean uh, for a given policy we are going to find out this capital r of p and that is constrained on the computational graph obviously because we are executing that graph and you want to find out the expectation over this uh, uh, by taking a policy p uh, from a sorry by taking a placement p from the policy basically the sampling right we'll see uh, this is the cost function and you can think i mean uh, these guys have designed this policy as sequence to sequence model uh, we'll see that so that is the sequ this policy basically the train is nothing but the sequence to sequence model and uh, they optimize this sequence to sequence model or the policy or they train the policy using uh, reinforced technique reinforce is a very well known technique in reinforcement learning and uh, they basically computes the gradient of the loss function with respect to theta and it's represented like this here and uh, what we want to do is since this expectation has to be computed we can approximate this as a monte carlo monte carlo uh, samples i mean monte carlo technique using monte carlo technique you can approximate this uh, integration basically you will get once you apply the expectation you just approximate this gradient equation uh, sorry the gradient with respect to the loss function uh, as uh, one of the as a, some, something like monte carlo so for that you can simply sample uh, i uh, i number of or k number of uh, policies sorry pay k number of placements from the policy then uh, you sum this function or sum this thing over all the placements right and uh, you just uh, take the sum of this then uh, you should be able to approximate this 
the gradient of the loss with respect to theta by this uh, Monte Carlo estimates, right? So this is, this is what they are trying to do. This is the whole formulation of the mm -hmm. model. So just think simply think of it as uh, you have a placement p, and uh, you are going to get that placement for by uh, drawing a sample uh, or just by by sampling the gradient. Uh, sorry, the by the sampling the policy pi uh, for a given. Uh, 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 given a computation graph on the theta and then you uh, find out the loss function or a cost function uh, using the uh, same old uh, expectation uh, with respect to uh, the the reward expectation of the reward uh, given the graph and then you finally use the reinforce to find the gradients right so this is what uh, they are trying to do this is the formulation and uh, the model as i said uh, the policy they are going to train is nothing but uh, the the uh, sequence to sequence model and uh, the sequence to sequence model with attention basically I mean you can think of that also so there is attention based uh, sequence to sequence model so the inputs to this model is basically the operations right so the operations could be like uh, matmul, con, max pool so those are the operations you have in your uh, tensorflow library right so those are the operation and using this operation you have a graph let's assume you have a particular task in your mind maybe let's say um, let's say image recognition something like that and so that image recognition network has a lot of operations like convolution max pooling uh, global ma max pooling soft max or many things and you can consider each operations as uh, op and which will have these sort of uh, 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 these uh, functions like uh, they, they, that operation will have a type output shape and adjacency, adjacency so those things you encode them into embedding and then feed it to a uh, lstm so that way you will be taking uh, series of operations like uh, op1 to op100 and it can go on till op2000 3000 also it depends on the number of param number of operations you have in your model so once you encode them then what you will be doing is essentially you will be have to decode you will have to decode using the attention and the input hidden vectors to predict which operation should go for which device like for example here once you finish feeding all the uh, operations to your model you will be predicting at the decoder using attention you will be predicting the operation p01 should go for which device then you condition the probability of selecting the next device for the operation op2 given the previous hidden state and the previous output also this is sort of like a generation like i mean generation is basically in language model generation we keep a uh, uh, generation uh, the generation model is basically it depends on the previous output like probability of uh, x i or probability of y i at that particular time i it depends on the previous output also y i minus one this sort of conditional probabilities right so that way they are devising they are uh, putting constraints of condition conditional uh, probability uh, i mean basically they are finding trying to find the conditional probability for predicting uh, the device for operation two given the given the prediction from uh, prediction for operation one so this is the whole setup and uh, looks easy right and uh, that is the architecture and in the architecture details what I am going to tell you like what are the actual content they have used. So basically as I said they are using sequence to sequence model with content content based uh, attention uh, and uh, content, based, uh, content based attention and the, the sequence sequence model is LSTM uh, to predict the placements of the uh, object for any device and uh, as I said uh, we are concatenating all the types, outputs and output shape and adjacency information and we are feed, I mean, feeding it to uh, any uh, embedding layer. And the decoder attention basically the decoder model is an attentional LSTM again with a fixed number of timestamp. Uh, I mean that is depend on the length of the graph. I mean if you have thousand uh, uh, operations, then you'll have only thousand uh, device placements predictions, right? So uh, that's it. And uh, here uh, decoder again outputs. I mean each step decoder outputs a device as I said, uh, device placements. And then uh, there is one trick they are using here. It's about uh, co-locating operations. So co-locating this operation is about like if you have uh, ten thousand or twenty thousand uh, operations in your uh, in your real graph, then it's a problem because you don't have so many devices in your system. So for that, what they do, they start uh, combining operations which are similar, and uh, they predict only one device for it, right? And uh, this is uh, there in TensorFlow. It's called co-locate with feature in TensorFlow and you can use that to concatenate or to uh, to make two operations go into one device and it also depends on like whether this output from the 
previous operation depends on the next operations output and they concatenate those two and uh, put them in one device so those are the things they are those are the trick they are using and uh, and uh, for an example in convolutional neural network they put con 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 layer and a pulling layer max pull layer into one collocation group right so that way so by doing this collocation uh, operations uh, they will be able to reduce the number of device they will be using for uh, placements and they are also employing distributed training because uh, as you know this is reinforcement learning technique and uh, you will have no idea initially like where to put the device on what uh, sorry where to put the option where to put the operation to which device so and you'll have thousands of uh, operations to put into uh, like hundreds of uh, uh, devices so for that they are using a distributed training where uh, you can train the model asynchronously so basically what they have they have a single parameter server and they have k number of controllers <coughs> okay so it's capital k number of controllers and each controller is assigned a worker right so these workers this controller gives you gives the worker a particular placement p and uh, it gives the the policy and uh, this worker has to train the model and uh, or it has to run the run the uh, uh, forward pass or it has to find out how much running time it takes or execution time of this graph and uh, get give that information back to controller and same way uh, it's going to happen for all the workers and in the other case again you have controller and uh, each uh, the controller two also provides them uh, some uh, placements uh, placement uh, sequence p uh, to all the workers and each of them uh, produces their own reward reward function sorry reward value and that will be used to train the uh, policy so that is a distributed training and uh, coming to the experiments uh, in this experiment they have conducted three experiments here uh, basically uh, one is to uh, one is for language uh, modeling task using recurrent neural networks with multiple lstm layers then they also have uh, neural machine translation with attention and uh, we'll see what is the data and uh, what is the architecture and they have inception v3 for image recognition and uh, particularly for inception v3 uh, they have uh, batches of image of uh, 20, 299 cross 299 cross 3 and uh, for L rnn lm and nmt they have used uh, two layer lstm uh, with varying size of hidden layers like to 2048 and 10, 10, 10 uh, for for example for the first rnnlm they have uh, 2048 hidden hidden vectors hidden uh, v neurons uh, for nmt they have 1024 hidden neurons then uh, for rnnlm and uh, nmt they are using mini batch size of 64 and uh, these uh, models are implemented sorry rnnlm and nmt are implemented using so the optimizations are uh, adam for them and for inception the optimization is uh, rms prop and uh, they have uh, one uh, intel haswell uh, architecture uh, 2300 cpu uh, which has uh, eight, 18 cores and uh, they have uh, two or four nvidia tesla k80 gpus and uh, th this is specifications and uh, so coming to the results results are interesting and uh, here they have uh, for example first line first row shows rnn lm and uh, they have shown the baseline of uh, sing using single cpu for execution time which takes around 6.8 seconds and uh, single gpu with a single single gpu basically the entire model is put on a gpu and uh, if you feed a 64 batch size uh, input it takes 1.5 second uh, execution time and uh, in gpus if you use 2 gpu 4 gpu and uh, this is this scotch is basically an other algorithm which was developed in 2009 by some guy and uh, that is uh, that is also sort of like uh, sort of divide placement and they have used that also i mean that takes a lot of time 13.43 and another version of this uh, scott is uh, scotch is min cut and uh, humans 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 designed uh, placements took uh, 3.81 seconds which are slower than gpus all right humans are humans uh, designed ones for two gpus and four gpus is again slow now uh, and uh, for rl based rl based you are actually almost close to single gpu right so there is not much improvement in the rnn lm case uh, coming to nmt basically if you use a single cpu it was 18 core and uh, they were getting around 10.72 uh, uh, seconds the execution time basically if, if they had used uh, if they have tried using single gpu it was uh, giving out of memory option i mean out of memory uh, error so there is no results for this and uh, here again you can see um, 
uh, it is almost beating the human expert 4.404 and 3.92 it's good good sign and coming to inception uh, the execution time of inception on cpu is very high like uh, 26 seconds which is very bad and uh, uh, single gpu is uh, 4.60 which is reasonably good inception and uh, again experts are getting around 11.22 and uh, uh, the RL based one is actually getting a very good uh, result like 0 0.4660 which is almost similar to single GPU and uh, 3.85 which is better than uh, using single GPU but uh, with four GPUs and it's also better than human expert and uh, these are the training curves and uh, this is for uh, NMT uh, as you can see the red one which is RL based placement uh, it's actually faster than a human expert as you can see for NMT task and this is another task for inception training uh, they have synchronous or asynchronous towers and uh, a synchronous uh, synchronous tower looks like it is getting speed up but uh, it is very speed it's very high high speed uh, out, i mean it's actually very fast but it is not uh, in results wise i mean the convergence wise the rl based is better right you can see here and uh, finally we will see some uh, pictures i mean here are the placements which are done by the rl uh, model i mean reinforcement learning expert i mean the policy basically so as you can see uh, there is no structure to it i mean just uh, these are cpus the white color ones are cpu and uh, this red colors one color ones colored ones are G different sort of gpus different types of gps like k80 k40 uh, different types of gpus and uh, as you can see there is no structure to it i mean if any humans had designed this uh, placement he wouldn't go for this sort of uh, messy uh, placements right uh, usually i mean essentially what people would do i mean they keep one lstm on one gpu another lstm on another gpu uh, but uh, this uh, architecture is sort of finding out it has to put all the embeddings onto cpu and uh, there are a few places it puts attention onto cpu and not uh, there is a bit messy but uh, still it's optimal uh, placement and the same thing is done for uh, inception uh, but here it's on some pattern is there like every uh, like, uh, like branch has uh, for example you could look at this branch this branch has put all the operations onto what gpu and even this branch has put all the operation to a single gpu uh, some sort of structure it has but uh, this previous one was a bit messy and uh, that's it for this video uh, thank you so much for watching the watching my tutorial and if you are not subscribed to my channel uh, please subscribe for more content thank you